ambulance service. What is the exact address of your emergency? Oh, 10 Don Street at St Mary's. Don Street? Yep. My, my dad just dropped. Alright, so I'm allowed to get you some help. Yep. What's the phone number you're calling from, please? Um, 8273 yep. 1616. Excellent. So, what's the problem there? Tell me exactly my, what. My dad just dropped. We were just moving some stuff, moving some stuff, and he just dropped to the floor, and he's, he, he's, not, he's not breathing and stuff. It's, I understand. Are you with him now? Uh, yeah. How yeah. old is he? Uh, 72. Hi, I'm Rob Elliott and this is the SA Ambulance Service Emergency Operations Centre. Each year the emergency medical dispatchers handle over 420,000 calls and handle the ambulance response to over 250,000 incidents. Calling an ambulance can sometimes be a stressful and frustrating experience, especially if you have a health or first aid background. This DVD will give you some insight into the call taking and ambulance dispatch process and assist you to gain the best care for your patient. Calls for ambulance assistance are answered by emergency medical dispatch support officers trained to use the Medical Priority Dispatch System, or MPDS. MPDS is a structured call taking process that not only triages the main illness or injury that has prompted the call for assistance, but also checks for specific signs or symptoms that may make the call a higher priority. These priority symptoms not only determine the urgency of the call, but also the type of assistance that should be sent. This is why it's so important that all the questions are answered. There are over 900 possible outcomes from MPDS. It's purely intended to help the dispatchers find the right dispatch determinant and make decisions around who to send to assist you. Answering the questions can feel like an eternity, especially if you're still trying to provide assistance to your patient. Although it may feel frustrating, it's the best thing you can do to ensure your patient's ongoing care. The quickest and most effective way to get assistance is to follow the questions and give concise, accurate answers. The days of needing to script an ambulance call or prepare a short speech are long gone. MPDS now does it all. A big part of the process is also deciding who to send. Ambulance services now provide a range of options from single person rapid responders, emergency support transport vehicles, paramedics, intensive care paramedics, extended care paramedics, special operations rescue paramedics, retrieval teams and sometimes medical officers. All the information gained by using the call taking system helps to determine who goes. The fact that there is a first aider or healthcare professional in attendance shouldn't change the ambulance response. That has to be based purely on the patient's condition. It does provide a greater level of care until the ambulance arrives. The patient will often be packaged ready for transport and a good handover will be available. These are the real benefits. Some people have also asked why paramedics ask so many questions or remove bandages and splints when they arrive. Although a handover is a great start for us, sometimes we need to make our own assessment of the patient and their injuries. This helps us give a handover at the hospital at the end and also gives us a chance to work out what further treatment we can do to help you. If the patient's condition worsens, it's a good idea to call the ambulance back because it may change the urgency or the type of ambulance dispatched to you. Part of the call management process is also to give first aid advice, also known as post-dispatch instructions. The emergency medical dispatch support officers have to do this to ensure that they comply with the requirements of MPDS, and in most cases patients benefit from good evidence-based first aid advice. Some first aiders don't see the need for this, but it is something that the dispatchers have to do. For a lot of people, a gentle reminder can be very helpful, even if they have got a health background. We've selected a few calls to give you some examples of the MPDS call taking process. SA Ambulance Service, what is the exact address of your emergency? Um, 10 Don Street at St Mary's. Don Street? Yep. yep. My, my dad just dropped. Alright, stay on the line, I'll get you some help. Yep. What's the phone number you're calling from, please? Um, 8273. Yes. 1616. Excellent. So what's the problem there? Tell me exactly my, what happened. My dad just dropped. We were just moving some stuff, moving some stuff, and he's just dropped to the floor, and he's, he's, he's not he's not breathing and stuff. It's, I understand. Are you with him now? Uh, yeah. How yeah. old is he? Uh, 72. Okay. And so is he conscious? Uh, uh, no, no, no. No? And is he breathing? Um, it, I, I can't, he's, he's an awful colour, he, I don't think okay, he is. Okay, have a look at him for me and tell me, is he breathing? Uh, no, no, no. 
Not, sure. not really, no. Stay on the line, I'll get you some help. Got the ambulance on the way. What was your name, please? Uh, Dave. Okay, Dave. All right. Now, what's your father's surname? Uh, James. All right, stay on the line. Yep. All right, now, did you see what happened? Yeah, yeah we're, we're just moving some stuff and he just dropped. He, he just, he, he just... All right, did he choke yeah. on anything first? No, no. Is there a defibrillator available? Uh, what, no. no. I don't know what that is. That's okay. I'm organising the paramedics to help you now. So on the line, I'll tell you exactly what to do next. Yep. Are you with him right now? Yes. Okay, yep. listen carefully. Now lay him flat on his back on the ground and remove any pillows. Okay, yep. All right, kneel next to him and look in his mouth for food or vomit. Is there anything in his mouth? No, no. All right, now place your hand on his forehead, your other hand under his neck, then tilt his head back. Uh, I've got to put the phone down. All right. Done that. Okay, put your ear next to his mouth and can you feel or hear any breathing? Um, no, he's not breathing. How long are they going to be? OK, well, I've got them on the way. I'm just going to help you with CPR. All right, listen carefully and I'll tell you how to do resuscitation. Make sure he's flat on the back on, this gro on the ground. Yep. Place the, heel, place the heel of your hand on his breastbone in the centre of his chest, right between the nipples. Yep. Put your other hand on top of that hand. Yep. OK, now push down firmly five centimetres with only the heel of your hand touching the chest. How, how many times? Now listen carefully. Pump the chest hard and fast at least twice per second. Okay. Do this 400 times. That's only three and a half minutes. Okay, I've got to put the phone down. All right. Are you there? Yes. I don't think it's working. He's, he, nothing's changing. OK, just keep doing this. You need to let the chest come all the way up between pumps and tell me as soon as you're done, OK? And I'll stay on the phone. OK. I can hear a siren. OK, now have you done the 400 pumps for me, Dave? Yep. OK, now we're going to start mouth to mouth. With his head tilted back, you've got to pinch his nose closed and yep. completely cover his mouth with your mouth. OK. Then blow two regular breaths into his lungs about one second each. The chest should rise with each breath. Can you do that? Yeah, yep, I can. OK. Yep. You there, Dave? Are you there? Yes. They're, they're here, I've got to go. All they're right. here, i got to right. go. All the best. SA Ambulance Service, what is the exact address of your emergency? Um, 8 Swan Avenue. And what suburb, sir? Um, that's at Hackham. Okay. And what number are you calling from, please? Um, 8555 and so what's the problem? Tell me exactly what happened. Well, I, I may be a bit of a nuisance to you, but I've, I've had this very bad stomach pain for most of the night, but in the last hour or so it's got really, really bad. I mean, I know it's a nuisance being 3 o'clock in the morning, no, but that's not a I problem. really can't get to hospital any other way. Sure, we'll get you some help. Thank and you. how old are you, sir? I'm 72. Now, sir, did you faint or pass out? Oh, no, I haven't actually passed it. I felt very quite ill last time I visited the toilet, but I haven't actually fainted or anything. OK, so you didn't feel like you wanted to faint at all? No. No, no. OK, excellent. Is the pain above your belly button? No, it's, it's kind of behind my belly button, going down to my bottom. I understand. All right, and your name, sir? Uh, James. Mr Warren Jones. Okay. All right, Mr Jones, we'll get you some help. Oh, thank you very much. Do, do I need to do anything for the, for the ambulance people? No, just stay on the line and I'll let you know what to do and we'll get yeah, some sure. help out okay, there for you. you. Now, do you have anything infectious or contagious? Not that I'm aware of, no. Oh, what a problem. 
perhaps some food poisoning. Is that a problem? No, that's all right. Okay. I'm organising the paramedics to help you now. Oh, Stay on the line yes. and I'll let you know what to do next. Oh, yes, thank you. Now, help is on the way. Don't have anything to eat or drink. It might make you sick or cause problems for the doctor. Yes, I think that might be right, yes. Okay, just rest in the most comfortable position for you. Certainly. Now, are you home alone, Mr Jones? Uh, or? Yes, I am. Yes. All right, okay. Now, um, are you happy for me to let you go? Oh, yes, no, that'll be fine. As long as someone's coming coming along, that's fine. Yes, certainly. They'll be with you soon. Now, if anything does change or get or gets worse, certainly call me back immediately for further instructions. OK, now, do I need to ask you for you by name? No, if you just dial triple zero, anyone here will be happy to assist you. Oh, OK, thank you very much, dear. All right, all the best, Mr Jones. OK, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.